Come on, let's have some church this morning.
says, stop trying to work things out before their times have come. Accept the limitations of living one day at a time. When something comes to your attention, ask me whether or not it is part of today's agenda. If it isn't, release it into my care and go on about today's duties. When you follow this practice, there will be a beautiful simplicity about your life. A time for everything and everything in this time. A life lived close to me is not complicated or cluttered. When, you when your focus is on my presence, many things that once trouble you lose their power over you. Though the world around you is messy and confusing, remember that I have overcome the world. I have told you these things so that, you, so that in me you may have peace. Let us pray. Lord, we come this morning in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for blessing us to be in the house of prayer just one more time. You've been mighty good, Lord, and we just want to say thank you, Lord. Pray, Lord, that you would bless us in this worship service. Pray, certainly, for our pastor today and his 25th anniversary, Lord, that you've blessed him for 25 years to lead this people, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for him, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for his son. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor E and Sister Gilbert, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all our elders, Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless and keep us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you are God, and beside thee there is none other. Nothing surprises you, Lord. You said that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You made us, Lord, and you know all about us. So we bless your name today. Praise your name, Lord, because you're so worthy to be praised. Lord, thank you, Lord, that a few of your children are yet praying, Lord, because you said and promised that the prayers of the righteous obey this much. Lord, we have an evil that lurking among us, but Lord, it's nothing for you. You have fought this. You've already defeated the enemy, and we just want to thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Pray, Lord, for our sick and shut in, Lord, and those that are sick, Lord. I pray, Lord, for our city. Pray, Lord, for our state. I pray, Lord, for our country. Even pray for the world in this pandemic, Lord. We thank you in advance for what we know you're able to do. Lord, you already know when you will defeat this enemy. We'll be careful, so careful, to give you all the praise. Now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Welcome to the Mount Sinai Baptist Church. We are also known as the Mountain Church. We greet you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and Spirit. We welcome those of you who are joining us and worshiping with us for the first time online. We come today to worship God in two ways, in spirit and in truth. We are elated and excited that you would praise and worship God with us on today. Again, you are welcome.
community is true, we are thankful for God's goodness and his mercy towards us. It gives us great pleasure to be thankful to God for what he's been doing in the life of the Mountain Church. And I present to you with pleasure the angel of this house who has been preaching at Mount Sinai as pastor for 25 years, Dr. Samuel Jackson Gilbert, the second Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Mold me, melt me, break me, fill me now with the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that my mind is alert, that my lips are anointed. Open my mouth that I may preach the mysteries of your gospel. Forgive me of every sin. Cleanse me of every unrighteousness. Then, Lord, I ask that you would hide me now behind the deepest, darkest, and most obscure portion of your cross. For these who are here will hear absolutely none of me, but hear absolutely all of thee. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to call your attention briefly this morning to Psalms 40 and 1. We may look at the first three verses, but I will read Psalm 40 and 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Thank you. I waited patiently for the Lord. I would like to talk briefly this morning from the subject, increasing your faith while you wait. Increasing your faith while you wait. Wait. Waiting is one of the hardest things for some people to do. We live in an impatient society that will treat you brutally if you're just two seconds slow. Try being in a red light and the light turns green and you don't move right away. There'll be horns from everywhere blowing at you. Or just try driving the speed limit and someone in a hurry wants to go by. You always know who is just in a fake, impatient hurry. Because you end up meeting up at the same red light. Seem to me, if you're really in a hurry, that red light ought not mean much to you. I know I've been in emergency situations before, and a small thing like a red light didn't stop me. It became a yellow cautious light because you're trying to get to your emergency situation. In the world of journalism, you have reporters who are always trying to get the first story. Many are in such a hurry that they miss getting all the facts. And then now we have leadership in our country who obviously lack the virtue of waiting. They say that they have appeal 
to cure COVID-19. Right. While the scientists are saying it needs to be tested more. Leadership says it's time to open up the marketplace in some parts of the country. While scientists say we need to wait and see where all this virus is spreading to. Lacks the virtue of waiting. Therefore, many people all over the land are waiting in fear. This virus has covered this whole nation. And we all are in the same boat, having to just chill out and wait. We also know that this virus has no respect of person. And I believe there's a message here for everybody. There's a message here for the rich. There's a message here for the poor. There's a message here for the sinner. And there's a message here for the saint. I believe there's a message for America. I believe there's a message here for the whole wide world. Only God can shut the whole world down and make us all sit and hear what he has to say. I'm reminded of being a little boy growing up, household playing around with my family, my brothers, and a thunderstorm would come around Thunder would roll. Lightning would flash. And my parents, my mom and daddy would say, Hush! Stop playing. Be still. Turn off the TV and the lights. Because God is speaking. I believe that's what's going on right now. I believe God is and he said, sit down, stay at home, hush, get out of the streets, because I got something to say to the whole world. Get out of the marketplace, shut it all down, hit the pause button in the world, because I have something to say. In our text, the psalmist is teaching us a lesson on what it means to wait when you are in situations above your head. In the marketplace, they call it when you're in something above your pay grade. Right now, we all are in circumstances that are above everybody's pay grade. They knew what it meant to have pressing enemies all around them. Well, nobody but God could deliver him. He was one who was very aware of God's ability to deliver. He also knew what it meant to have to trust God when you do not know which way to go. And he teaches us that there comes a time in all of our lives when all we can do is wait on God. There comes a time. There is a time. This is a time. Well, Wait on God. And it's this wait that should cause our faith to increase and not decrease. Some, some, some folks' faith is going the wrong way right now. But I stopped by 
to share with every believer that if you are a saved child of God, this is the time for your faith to get stronger. This is the time to know who God really is. This is the time. So the question is raised, how do you increase your faith while you wait? Well, first of all, the psalmist says we must remember to wait patiently on the Lord. The, 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 way, the way it's written in the Hebrew text reminds us that the psalmist are, are waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. It's the doubling down of the word. It is, it is, he waited and waited. As a matter of fact, it suggests that uh, he waited, his waiting was a wait of prayers that were being prayed to the Lord. That it wasn't just a senseless wait. That it was a wait of, of, of talking to God and wait on God to answer his prayer. Which means he prayed and prayed repeatedly. He prayed even when it seemed his prayers would not be answered. It suggests he prayed in continual hope when there seemed to be no response. Church, that's exactly what we need to do right now. If we're going to increase our faith while we wait, we must be praying while we're humping down in our various homes. All I'm trying to tell you, saints of God, is that now is a good time to get caught up on your prayer life. Folk who know me know that as much as I fly, I always had a thing about flying. That the longer my flight, the longer my prayer. Huh? And that's how it must be right now. The longer we wait, the more we ought to pray. The Lord has a way, the Lord has a way of putting all of us in the posture of prayer. To wait. To sit at home. Can't go nowhere. That's a posture. When you realize that no one has any answers, no one knows how long this COVID-19 will last, no one knows how many people will get infected, no one knows how many will die, and no one even knows the cure right now, that suggests to me that God has put us all in a prayerful posture. Now that he has us in that posture, it's time for us to actually pray. Let's not waste our time doing everything but talking to the Lord. Let's not waste our time over-exercising or overeating. Let's not waste our time by watching too much television or overindulging in social media. Now is a good time since God has us in this spot. Now is a good time for us to fall on our knees and talk to him about what's going on. I don't know about you, but I got a lot to talk to God about. Talk to him about your family. Talk to him about your health. Talk to him about your finances. Talk to him about your fears. Talk to him about your faith. Now we got plenty of time to cover all the prayerful situations that we find ourselves in in these times. When you spend time with the Lord, somebody ought to at least take time in the midst of doing your yoga in the midst of doing your exercises. Somebody ought to stop and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where shall I go? 
when you spend time with him, it will increase your faith while you wait. Secondly, the psalmist teaches us to remember that prayer creates proximity to God. Prayer creates proximity to God. He says, he inclined unto me. That word inclined means properly bowed. Means that God bent forward to place his ear near the mouth of the psalmist so that he could hear it. You see, church, there are times that at first it seemed that God does not hear. Seems as if God throws himself back and turns his head away. But after we prayed and prayed and prayed mightily, he begins to bend forward. That, that's what prayer does. It makes God bend forward. That's what we need right now, church. We need God to bend forward. We, we, we need God to incline his ear towards us. And I don't know about you, but that's what I need. I need God to lean over and hear what I'm trying to say. Because I have real, I have real concerns right now. And, and, and this is the time for everybody to pray so much so that God will lean forward and hear what we try to say. So remember while you are in your confinement that, 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 that you are not alone. For the more you pray, the closer God gets to you. The more you pray, the more God will come near you. Prayer is God's language. Prayer brings God closer. Much prayer. Huh? The closer he gets. The less prayer, the farther away you are from him. So keep on praying while you're in your places of abode. And know that the more you pray, the closer God gets to you. I tell you something, you'll know it when he shows up in your room. You, you'll know he's near because you'll, you'll, start, you'll start praising God and you'll do it all by yourself. You, you, you'll start crying of his goodness and grace in your life and nobody's even around you. You'll start clapping your hands and praising God and, 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 and nothing, nothing, nobody you know God is near because you'll feel something moving on the inside. There'll be a little fire rolling in you, shut up in your bones. There'll be a, 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 an emotional outburst. You know God is near. Nothing stays the same when God gets in proximity of you. I find myself sometimes just talking to God. Yes, and next thing I know, tears are just Lord, rolling God. down my eyes. Me too. Because I feel His presence. Yes, it's like the wind yes. that comes in. You know, not from which it comes, nor where it goes, but you know it's there. Yes, He's, there. He's there. He's near. It's good to know you're not alone. That God is near. Yes. And when God is near, he eases our doubts. Yes. Right. When God is near, he strengthens your faith. Yes. When God is near, he increases your confidence. Yes. Right. Knowing ultimately that everything is going to be all right. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yes. When I spend time with the Lord, yes. seem like all my problems. Walk out the door. Still got bills that need to be 
faith. Yep, yep. Still got more marks than money. Still got circumstances going on that I cannot handle. But I ain't worried about it no more. But when God gets near, I have confidence in him. And I don't have to worry about all. He'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. He give you a call. Songwriter says, No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave you. Never to leave you alone. And finally, if your faith will increase while you wait, you must remember that he hears our cry. It's just good news to know that God will hear you. He'll hear you when you cry. Ah, just knowing that he hears our cry reminds you of a baby that's crying and crying and crying. And the mother comes along and eases that baby's cry. She, 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 she seems to know just what the baby needs in order to ease the cry. I want you to know that that's the way our God is. He knows just what you need in order to ease your cry. And you see, you see that God, when God gets close enough to you, he begins to assume his posture as well. His posture is to prepare to act on your behalf. Ah, uh, he's, he's like a gun that's locked and loaded. He's like a track racer who's on the mark and set. He's, he's like a rocket that's on a countdown. Uh, he's, he's like a time bomb that's set to, to go off. Yeah. And so our text in verse 2 says he brought him up out of a horrible pit. Yeah. Yeah. What we're in right now, church, we're in a horrible, horrible pit. Yeah. You find, you find, you find babies are being born. Without all of the loved ones around to bring them care. We're in a horrible pit. You find, you find the marketplace shut down. People all over the land are losing their jobs. We find that there's hardships and pain. People are dying all over the place. Cemeteries are full of people who are arriving without the entourage of people. At the graveside to say goodbye. All I'm trying to say, church, is that we're in a horrible, horrible pit. Now, I got a witness, and he reminds us that he will bring us up. Yeah. Uh, he will bring us out. Yeah. Won't he do it? Uh, the Bible says in verse 2, uh, and not only will he bring you up uh, and bring you out, uh, but he'll set your feet yeah. on a rock. Yeah. I got to close here for you. Don't you? Yes. Children of God ought to know about 
that rock. His name is Jesus. Mary's baby, his name is Jesus. A bright and morning star. His name, his name is Jesus. My way out of no way. You know it, don't you? He's the one who died on Calvary. He's the one they hung him high. Stressed him wide. He hung his head. Again, that number is 
869-9171. For those who would like to give and be obedient to God's word by giving back the first fruits of what God has blessed you with, we encourage you to text to give. The phone number is 713-963-9512. You can also bring your tithes to the church or mail them at 902 West 8th Street, Houston, Texas, 77007. Thanks again for tuning in, and once again, we refer you back to our angel of this house, Dr. S.J. Gilbert, the second. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of our worship. Thank you for your prayers. And it is our prayer that you will allow your faith to increase while you wait. Our Father God in heaven, we come thanking you now for this time of sharing. We thank you for this worship and worship experience on today. Now, Lord, in our departure, it is our prayer that you will bless each with your peace, prosperity, protections, and provisions until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Mountain Church.